Hi again everyone. In this simple video we're going to discuss partial derivatives and chain rules for functions of two variables. Now we're going to um, look at the following example but before we get to that let's give a little bit of background and a little bit of motivation for the study of these ideas. Well at school you would have seen the chain rule for functions of one variable and we know that a chain rule, well, it, it's an important technique for computing derivatives. And if we can compute derivatives, then we can form a better understanding of the rates of change of, of functions. Now, for functions of two or more variables, the chain rule gets a lot more complicated, a lot more profound, and there are many different forms of the chain rule. So it's a big step from the chain rule you saw at school to the chain rule for partial derivatives and functions of two or more variables. So let's build our intuition. Let's actually uh, formulate a chain rule and see how this all works. So consider the following function where um, the function has continuous partial derivatives. Now you may think, why do we make this assumption here? Well, that's one of the assumptions uh, to ensure that the chain rule um, works. Now, if we make a change of variables, x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta, then show that the partial derivative dw dr satisfies um, this expression here. Now, firstly, a, a few things. We don't really know what f is here. f is just some general function. And the next thing you may, may be thinking about is, well, what, what's this r and what's this theta? Well, you, you can think of x and y being Cartesian coordinates and r and theta being polar coordinates. And you, you may also be thinking, thinking why, why would we want to make a change of variables? Well, in some cases, a change of variables can simplify problems that we're, we're working on, particularly, for example, in um, uh, double integration. Now, Let's get back and see how we can compute this derivative and what the chain rule is. So to compute the derivative dw dr, we form an appropriate chain rule. Oop, appropriate chain rule. Okay, now the first question is, well, what, what, what is the appropriate chain rule in this case for dw dr? Now, there are lots of formulas you can try to remember, but I like to draw a little diagram that actually, when used properly, can construct any chain rule. So, let me show you how it works. First of all, we identify that w equals f, and f depends on two variables, x and y. So if I draw a little splitting branch down here and identify the variables of f. Then I move on and go, okay, the variable x depends on two other variables, r and theta. So again, I draw some little branches showing the dependence of x on r and theta. And the same with y. y depends on r and theta. Okay, so now what I can do is actually use this little diagram to formulate the chain rule to calculate dw dr. What I do is I start at the top and because I want to calculate dw dr, I look at all the branches that take me down all the paths that take me down to an R. So I can go down this path here or this path here. Now, when I move from letter to letter, I form a derivative. So let's systematically just work through this. Okay, df dx times dx dr. And I go down the other branch, df dy times dy 
dr and I add these together. Okay, so that is my general chain rule for dw dr. Now, I could also form a chain rule for dw d theta. I would go down all the paths leading to a theta, but that's not what we need here. Okay. So let's see if we can compute these partial derivatives and come up with the required um, expression for dw dr. Okay. Okay, now let's consider df dx. Now we don't know what f is, so we just have to leave that. Let's consider dx dr. Now x equals r cos theta. So we'll be able to compute this. Again, we don't know what f is, so I have to leave df dy alone. And y equals r sine theta. So let's take our partial derivatives here and here. We're differentiating with partially with respect to r, so I imagine all the other variables are fixed and I differentiate normally with respect to r. So the derivative here of r cos theta will just be cos theta. The derivative here of r sine theta will just be sine theta. Okay, so now if we look back up to the expression that we wanted, well, we have it right here. So we've shown that dw dr satisfies this uh, expression here. So we've finished the problem. Now, let's just talk a little bit about the bigger picture. What are some techniques that you can use for all sorts of problems? Well, at least in my opinion, it's generally helpful to draw a simple diagram to understand which form of the chain rule to apply. Now you may look at this chain rule here and go, well, I can remember that. Or well, if you can, that's great. But when you get to many variables and more complicated cases, it's, it's almost impossible to remember the chain rule. So my advice is to draw a simple diagram. So for functions of two or more variables, the chain rule takes a more profound form than the one variable case. There's lots of different forms and they're, they're, they're quite complicated. Now, it's important that you learn maths by doing maths. Don't just sit there and watch this video and, you know, don't do any work. I encourage you to do some, some examples and really um, master this subject. So I've provided you with an example, Let, uh, very similar to the one I just solved. Uh, consider the, follow the following function. If we make a change of variable, x equals r cos theta, y equals r sine theta, show that dw d theta satisfies this. Okay, so you have to go through and formulate the chain rule for dw d theta.